But somehow, the Morris takes people of limited ability to do a, 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 a dance form which the technique is quite limited as well. Right? Although it takes time to, you know, to work up the skill and things like this. It's something which is possible for near ordinary people to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deal with Phil's red herring. Because <laughs> I don't think the Morris was dying, I think it was killed. I think that you've got to look at the form mm. of Morris to look for reasons why it was dying. It had lots of things going bad for it, like the whole depopulation and the whole change of society. I think it's wrong to blame Morris and its content for that. And there's plenty of traditions that, because they didn't rely on real populations and they've been protecting the way, the whole, um, the whole business of royalty and so on, you know, they've gone forever because there's no question of their basic support being withdrawn. So I don't think you need to, um, you know, uh, look for a reason why there's something wrong with it somehow. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, I'm just saying it was dying. And a, a lot of other things die for a number of reasons. Yeah. Not because there's anything wrong with but it. But at the time the cops of Morris was almost dead, the northwest Morris was actually flourishing. Yeah. Almost at its peak. I want apologies for the middle classes here because it seems to me all that's happened is it's taken more than 100 years to, to follow the communities where they went, you know, out of the villages into the towns, but it, it went anyway, eventually. <coughs> I don't think we're any or a different class, but then everybody's a different class. You know, we don't work on the land anymore, but as Roy keeps point out, we're not that different genetically, you know. We still enjoy moving and saying, no, I don't. In a way, I think we can easily deny ourselves the right to connect in with that pleasure of performance and what the most is, because we're not those people. And uh, I think all it's done is it's made that social jump that it probably made before, and that jump we're talking about between the restoration and the pre rest you know, pre what I mean, you know, the Commonwealth. That was a similar leap, you know, from the courts to the people. I don't think that invalidated it. I think that, to me, it validates even more that the form can translate to different generations, different eras, <coughs> even. That's phenomenal, really. Right. Certainly, as a, a sort of artistic form, it's severely limited. But it hasn't encouraged the uh, importing it many different steps. You know, the Morris has got a very limited repertoire of movement. It's got a very limited repertoire of tunes, it's got a very limited repertoire of figures. You know, when you look at the enormous eight point say, of country dance movements, you know, the possibilities in dance, pattern dancing, is enormous, as you can see in modern Northwest, as it were, you know, the way they turn up. Um, to incorporate, you know, we, don't, we, haven't, we haven't had science incorporating that sort of thing. I don't remember a new, perhaps a new slow caper, but I don't remember a new step been added to the Morris. Isn't that maybe because we tend to view the Morris differently to what I suspect the old communities did? I mean, you were talking last night about um, the way that uh, new ideas were absorbed in the past into the Morris, yeah. and, and this diffusion from village to village. It's essentially a slow process, so it builds up to the level of complexity that we have now, but we tend to, we, we still tend to view it with some sort of degree of super respect and awe. And, and people come up with it and say, that'd be a really good step, and somebody else says, yeah, but it's not Morris. So they, they, they throw it away. I don't think that, yeah, I think that happens. I don't think it's as much because of respect and awe. I'm thinking of shape and harmony. You know, it's wonderful. If you made it more complex and made more sort of you know suspended chords and stuff, it wouldn't be shape note harmony. And I think there's some some things that need a certain simplicity and a certain shape to be what they are. Yeah, but you've got you've got this um, difference between the idea of hanging on to the form that we, the essential form that it has now against the the urge to develop it. Like what I was suggesting. I mean, I'm not saying that it's necessarily a good thing to import. Mm -hmm. Ideas which are not Morris in quotes. Because, I mean, it depends on their individual merits. But I think a lot of perhaps good ideas aren't even considered because they're not Morris. 
Do you think it's perhaps limited by the sorts of tunes? I mean, in English music tradition, it, I mean, it's sort of fairly simple. If you look um, uh, at somewhere like Hungary or Czechoslovakia, somewhere like that, so you've got very complex rhythms. Well, and the dancers must be more complex. Yeah, the tunes are very simple. I've read quite a lot of Hungarian music, and it's extremely simple. The, the rhythms are complex. If you if you know how to how to understand Hungarian rhythms, they're, they're very very easy. Yeah, well, if, you know, if you know if you know if you if you if you if you count instead of counting one two three four, count if you count up to eleven, if you break it up into four yeah. in groups of four and three, no problem. The concepts of the dance aren't a problem, and the tunes are dead simple. They're far more simple than English tunes. They've got less notes in them, they've only got about five notes in them, maximum. I'm going to forward a proposition yeah, that we're quite limited by the music, you know, perhaps with the steps, and yeah. prepared to be knocked down on that. Right, do you know of a side which uses sort of modern music, which has used anything on it, post-45? Do you mean modern instruments or modern music? No, modern music. Well, not modern just sort music. of classical music? No. Popular music. Well, yes, I know. I mean, I've heard using things like Lord of the Dance tune, which is what some of the 50s or 60s. That's a lot of the show tune. Good try. Well, Mr. Jocks used the Iron Man. This business of what's a good more good cops or Morris tune has been puzzling people for a long time. A good classic question what's a good cops or Morris tune? We know an awful lot of ones that aren't. Uh, so much of um, 20th century music does not suit the cops or Morris. What about last Richmond Hill? That's a terribly recent tune for Morris. It's not the last. It's not a classical tune. It's not a classical tune, but it's caught on to almost every tradition. It just is a, it's a People are writing fairly old-fashioned sounding tunes all the time. Modern pop music is all in 4-4, I think, I don't know, it's always beats and hits, so you can keep on jigging in the disco, you don't have to change them, the check back and changes, you know. It's all very boring. Disco, you know. I can think of Beatles tunes you can dance to. Oh, yeah. Why aren't people dancing to you? Well, they, yeah. Why it's sometimes they? difficult to play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. On the one road melodian, they're impossible. <laughs> yeah. And they don't sort of, uh, when you folk, you find them a bit, they don't seem right. <laughs> Maybe they don't play them for the same reason that they don't import new singers because of this sort of popular well, mind respect for perhaps, you know, it's not. I mean, for years, you've been plugging Alexander's Ragtime Band as an ideal tune for Belgium. No, I'm just, just yeah, saying, but, I mean, you, you, you can dance. You, 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 you have been plugging it every, every work I've ever been. Oh, yes. For years of you, you've said, Alexander's Ragtime Band is a good tune for Belgium. But I have yet to see any side dancing to it. Oh, no, because, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to make a sort of negative point with that. The same thing's true if you use the red, red rabbit, robin, or you know, yeah. tunes of this sort, you know. They actually fit the nature of the tradition, the way, the way they actually dance. But somehow or other, it offends to actually use these tunes. Yes. Are we having Dave Robbins? Sort of I'm, I'm we actually answers the question that why aren't we using modern tunes? Because it, it, it offends, but why? Oh, interesting point. Why? Yes. Yeah. Why? Yeah. why? Yeah. why? Yeah. Northwest. 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 Because, yeah. because I mean, didn't the old dancers they used to make musical tunes and things like that? That's right. I said, Perhaps getting so. upstairs with nigger minstrel tune. You know, uh, oh, we're on to them talking about the musical tunes. They're going to tune that they thought they could do something. What if they they used it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so something stands the test of time. It's a good tune, it's just surprising. Yeah, I've got to start with it. Why aren't why, why, why we doing it now? Yeah. Well, there aren't that many good tunes about now, to be honest. Well, there are tunes which are going to last in musical terms or in popular song terms, but they're not being used. It's nice. But they don't fit conveniently into the sort of bar pattern. 
Beatles or whatever. Yeah, I to be honest, there are not that many really good tunes being produced now. Oh, well, but no, there never were many good tunes produced. But, like, there were never many good songs. But they're, 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 you know, Most of them died, you know, completely forgotten, thank God. Some of the ones that have died, you know, really was cool. Nowadays, nothing. I mean, you can't dance to something that hasn't got a, a, a tune to it, otherwise you don't know where you are. Yeah. Morris tunes, I think Morris tunes require a very distinct A and B music, otherwise simple folks forget where they are. Isn't it partly that the, the traditional musician in the, the turn of the century, if you were doing a dance, you had to dance more or less what he could play, yeah. what he knew. Whereas nowadays, you can find out, you have the musicians who can look up notation, who can go and find out the tune, even if they don't know it, they'll go and learn it. Um, whereas in a more isolated community... Yeah, well, maybe not totally. But, uh, we, we tend to try and be more authentic nowadays. We're, what we feel yeah. is authentic, whereas at the time, surely it would be. Do you, can you suggest a tune? Or that you one you're always playing? I think if, you could, if you could actually step in five, four times, you can dance and take five, because it's got a. You, you, can, you can simplify it to a basic A and B formula. So you've got a tune that you can. To A and B. Yeah. Well, I mean, or A and B and C. My experience of playing for Morris that people would come to you and say, "Well, that's a great tune," or they don't, and I'm trying to pin it down. You know what it is, and it says, all the ones they say that's a great dancing tune, they've got a quality of um, the melodies giving them a lift all the time, mm -hmm. and the tunes like um, Old Folk, you know. You know, you know mm -hmm. Where the tune, it, it, do, it doesn't stand one note, but it, it tends to sort of arch, give you a sense of movement going and down the end. It's not the strongest. Um, yeah. yeah. That's right. It doesn't have many notes, notes, but they're all. That quality is something that's very, very rare in modern music. Yeah. Of, because that sounds old fashioned, that quality. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a sort of two way thing. You know, Modern tunes tend to have this descending bass line all the time, you know, like yesterday. That's so typical of modern music. Try dancing to that kind of thing, it's totally the wrong thing for the voice. Which is, <laughs> you want something. Um, you know, there's some good analysis of uh, musical themes uh, according to the relationship between each note. So you you record things as uh, up, 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 or up, up, down, down, mm -hmm. down. And you can get, by the time you've got to about seven um, steps, you can always define any melody. And it seems that a vast bulk of melodies come into the up 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 to begin with. That's the biggest section is the up up up. Yeah, why does that tune still survive so well? Brandenburg's that kind of thing. Because Bach knew about that. On so many advanced melodies have that quality <coughs> arching off as you go. <laughs> 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 Not all Morris tunes have that quality, and I find that you play a workshop a tune like um, Old Wheatley Truckles, and it, yeah, Actually, enthusiasm is very difficult. It all depends on your imagination, you see. Um, yeah. Take the 1812. <laughs> You can just imagine doing slow capers while the cannons are firing, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Think of it, yes. some significance in the fact that the number of good Morris tunes in Rigo is severely limited, that very few song tunes have ever got into the Morris, and when they have, they've been not in song versions of it. There's an awful lot of music is, is lost to you because it's arranged words. Certainly orchestral, classical music and so on, it's hardly made it, except for Bach's Chorale. And I'm not even sure whether that was a real example of <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, chewing gum might, but it works, of course. Uh, uh, you might say that you know, exceptions aren't really significant. And you, we could dig around in that quite a bit, I think. Mm -hmm. But Handel's melodies could be used. Yeah, but you get away with that because they're unfamiliar, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, in a sense, musical songs cover all, all sorts of rhythms, all sorts of requirements, you know. Why didn't they get into the folk repertoire? Or perhaps they are the folk repertoire, but they're certainly not in the dance repertoire. It's perhaps that way of dancing, though. I mean, there are some tunes, it's, it's dancing, but it's... I don't know how you describe it, but there are tunes you just hear and say, that's perfect for a dance. It's just something about them. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's also to do with the concerts which you hear it, because you hear it being played in that way. But, you know, you hear the same tune being slaughtered. Yeah. But there is a quality that some yeah. tunes just have. And it's no matter how new or how old they are, they've just got that quality. Why do a lot of people say, um, oh, we should say that's a falling tune? Mm -hmm. That's one of the oldest Morris tunes we've got that survived all this time. That's got some Hungarian qualities in there. Oh, always even the similar. I've mentioned to you before going to a dance in Tony Barron's place in the States where we went along, where the call had made up most of the dancers that were called in the evening, and certainly the fiddle and piano player had written all the material they were playing. And they had a row of tune books in front of the stage. You could buy what, any one of these five tune books or all the things they've written over the years. And it was all very danceable and all very exciting. People can write tunes. I don't Actually, know. people do like modern tunes. We'd be talking about modern tunes as though it's like found tunes from somewhere else. But there are sides of you know, musicians who may well, not. Well, modern tunes, which are good for Morris, tend to be in an old fashioned idiom, oh, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's say like John Kirkpatrick, you know, who's massaged a number of tunes and produced a number of tunes that look as if they ought to be ancient. Yeah. You know, and they are sort of very great what tunes to play. And he does that, or did that particularly at Barney. Yes. They wrote their own tunes too. Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, not, to be honest, I'm not sure how many of those have stand the test of time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. None of them really yeah. that memorable. But that's yeah. the problem I find when I make a tune. You think, well, it sounds a bit like something else, yeah. a bit like something else. Well, so what's the point? Mm. Yeah. But by yeah. definition, to make up something that doesn't sound like every other one's tune. But that's the same with making up a slow caper. And you're saying, didn't think, couldn't think of anyone who made, made up a slow caper. Yeah. There are only capers. And jump. Oh, There's only a limited number. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I almost was, was dogmatic. And I, I remembered Windsor's efforts to produce slow capers for Queen's Delight and things like that. Cheerleaders' Guidebook. But it's, it's relatively easy to, to make up figures. Yeah. Well, read it. I'll give you the book about this. But, but to make up. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, we still haven't well, no, no. It's always easy to make complicated things, that's the trouble. Mm. <laughs> you know, the number of good simple you know, simple ideas are hard to come by. It's the sign of an incompetent composer or an inventor that makes something very complicated. Yeah, but you see, I'll put it to another, another thought about Morris dancing. That a number of people's ideas, let's say like Balance the Store Field 10 and the Valentine's, or, they become widely popular as either the tune or the movement is very good. Um, if every sign in the country, 500 of them, invented a new dance every year, uh, and they were all recorded, in my lifetime there would have been, what, 15,000? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got too many noughts. <laughs> um, 1,500, that's right. But there would have been an incredible number of dancers. No, no, I actually really talk around, I reckon a lot of science do invent dancers and have ideas and things like in this sort of number. They don't invent tunes so much because there aren't quite the number of musicians who actually have the capability of composing tunes. Yes, 
you change over and go on down the other side. Right? So, if you're like number one, you reel down to the bottom, right? and you reel back again, and that makes you halfway around. Because then, you reel down this side, and reel back again. Now that's all very clear and simple if you're number one. The rest of you get the same track at different times. Right? So put your stick on your shoulder, and we'll go ta ti e a ta ti 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 ti
real dame is face down and cast off to your left. And then round you go. <laughs> All you ladies and people sitting down will have to do it in the repeat. Sticks one, you hate. Sticks two, real. Sticks one, you hate the other end. Sticks two, real. Six ones, sticks two. Right. It goes on a bit. Right, we're going to try and play a tune.
best team in that. <laughs>
Cross to the left. And go between.
And see, I could play it on the tape. Uh, but it's but not very good. It. <laughs> <laughs> Right. 
It's like, can I, can I take your place for a moment? Because you learn these things too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> we face up, right? In, working in four, so just the four of us, right? We can't stay, we're going to walk this way, just can't stay. You follow until we are facing in a line of four. Oops. And then we're going to half reel through until we're on the wrong side. And we're going to cast it again and do the same thing again, right? Pass through until you end up where you started. Now, the problem, of course, that's easy, right? Can we all do that? Let's walk it without wearing the hands and the feet. Right? Now you should have gone up. No. What I wanted done, we do this. Oh, you're still having trouble with the path. Yeah, don't try. There aren't, there's not as many paths as you think. Yeah. Right, yes. <laughs> so we go out with half papers. Let's work it slowly. We can't stay on four furries, four half capers, right? And face across. Now, <coughs> We weave through with down, up, circle, down, up, circle, down, up. Double step. Double step, yeah. Okay. Right. And of course, remember we're a set. You're actually working in pairs. <laughs> Famous last words, I know, right? Let's just try that. T, down, and up, and circle, down, and up, and circle, down, and up. Right? Now we do the same thing coming back. Half out. We need more room really. But D one up, circle, down, up, circle, down, up. Face down and we foot down. Figure is one B, as it were, is exactly the same as the other, but we start with the other pair of right? Cast eight. And reel across. Cast eight again. Same people D, reel across. <laughs> Back to the place in that way. Now we foot in. Foot in, you dance the same thing, you know, the, the eight bars, but foot in, right? So figure two, 2A, two in your pairs, pairs on the side, the left hand person, the right hand person stands still, which is a great, great feature of this dance. Uh, the right hand person does this, right? D what did I say? I was obvious to the left, wasn't I? Yes. So I was wrong. Yes, yes. Yeah. <coughs> what I did was right, right? <laughs> now we as pairs we cross over. Right? One, two, three, and circle. One, two, three, and circle. Okay, so now. Then the left hand person goes behind, turn eight, no, 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 turn eight that way, and over that way, and we cross over again. Oh, great, isn't it? Can we try that bit to music? Did we actually try the other bit to music? Can we? No. No, all right, we do figures 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. Right, so foot up and start. We do the first half of the dance and have a
Now, having got crossed over, the ends come in like that. Right? And you're in a quadrille. A quadrille. This is advantage of eight to see the formations from nine to six. Right. Now we do foot square. <laughs> foot square. Yes. And then the left hand person goes behind to the right again, or everybody at once. Everybody, all the right, all the lefts go around to the right. And we all cross over together. Which left? The original left. The original left. This one goes there. Right, do it. Now you should see your path to cross over is quite clear because there's nobody standing in the way. So just. We go around here. He doesn't move. So now there's actually a gap for them to go through and so on. Now these will get out of your way. You all cross over simultaneously, right? It's a pair in terms of pair. They were just slow. I said simultaneously, not after. <laughs> back, back to where you were. Hey, listen. Right. This being slightly were tolerant. Oh, right. right, cross over together, everybody. No! This is go fast. Go first. It's not your you make it slow. Very slow. <laughs> Come back as a pair and you turn around, right? The, the outside one walks around in front, so we're now facing this way, right? We all, let's do that figure again. Left behind the right, cross over in order. Left behind the right, cross over. Each side turns into the middle, into the middle, so that we have in the middle what would be a right hand star if we were doing that sort of thing, and the eight side brings facing the other way. Right. That's just to stab you. This is the foot star. Foot cross. Foot cross. Oh, foot up is where it's cross formation. Oh, really? How are you going with foot cross? You're not facing the right way. Awesome, yeah. Are you from the middle of the earth? This is the foot cross position, right? From this position, you then do a grand change, circular height. Oh. So we would back out. No, the per if you pass the person that you've got with the left shoulder to start, you automatically, yeah, you're already starting. Oh, yeah. so, oh. Circular height means keep going away from it. Circle, we do foot in. <laughs> right, foot in the middle. Right, foot in the middle. That would be good. Let's just get position this way. Can I get you back to the quadrille? Quadrille formation. I want to watch this section. I know you're marvellous. <laughs> Left behind right. Crossover. No, but that's behind. You go rain all the way rain behind, right? And left behind right again. And cross over. X 
to turn the former star formation, dance on the spot, and then circular hand. At the end of the music, whenever that is, we face the centre and we foot in and all in. There you are. <laughs> Obviously not. It's not a Cotswold, Ford and North West Garland dance. <laughs> it's original, different. But can we try it from the, um, the quadrille formation?
probably its first and only public performance. <laughs> Custer's last stand. So it's a memorable thing. All you have to know is that Custer's last stand was on my birthday. Or my birthday was the anniversary of Custer's last stand. Something like that. Now, this is not my last stand. I should die slowly. This is a long version. Yeah, sure. 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 It, it's a sidestep and a half a. We know what sidestep means, right? And half a. But the foot up does not contain a galley. Right? The sidestep dancers, the short sidestep dancers, don't have galleys in them. So you, you foot up, hop back, jump to face front, face front, halfway through, foot up in long, in foot down always. Yeah. Right, yeah. And then foot down. Right. Face front, short across. In foot up, face up. Back yeah. and then you jump to face yeah. in, across, yeah. and then yeah. it's across in right. field ten and eight for sure.
is that if you read the Morris books about field time back step, you find that it says the feet, the balls of feet slide back. On the back step, you actually keep the feet on the ground. Uh, you may sensibly interpret that as close to the ground, but don't wave it around in the sky. It's really meant to be back down on the ground. Now that's been confirmed a number of times from all the dancers. Secondly, the older Bampton men, which is pretty young Francis Sugar, when they toured into, into Leafield, used to meet old dancers who danced with them, and they described the side steps as heavy. And by that meant emphasis on the first foot. And what's more, it was neither open nor closed on the whole. Basically, they put his forward. Right? <coughs> Emphasise that first step and sort of you know, go forward basically. I see most of you wave your hands slightly in the back step, which again is the way that was done for Sharp that got lost by the EFGS and the teaching. Um, and the hay is of course a side step, not an ordinary step. Can we do signposts? Ah, another thing to say. Which set am I in? Round. Round. Up until 1949, nobody went into the middle in rounds except in the rows. Right? Uh, I, well, I say 1949, talking to pre-war dancers, in, in dancing range, you, you play very like Bampton, you know, for tea, and you turn, and you just continue backing around the circle, right, and jump to face front. There was none of this business going into the middle. But those people who, you know, started Morrison again in 49, found somehow fashion had changed, and the ring size were all then doing the rose type rounds, influence the Cambridge Morris of course at the time, uh, going in. Now that's all very well, you know, going in is a nice expressive figure uh, and works beautifully for the handkerchief dancers. I think we'll all realise that it's not so good for sticks. And I would recommend going back to the older practice in stick dancers so that halfway around the range you're facing across and you can actually clash with somebody. Uh, at the moment, you're going with stick dancers, all the sticks go and poke, and it's all messy. They're not very subtle. So, uh, re realise, you know, it's a modern innovation. Right, let's do Simon. Simon Can you do yeah. that?
the hay. Start walking the hay, please just walk the hay. Now, for the backing bit, the top couple are facing up along the line. They really are facing up, not in, up. And everybody else faces down. Down, right? And back up to place. That way. <coughs> If we're facing down, do you need to turn early? Turn early. Face down, then. That's why it's a reasonable. Do you mean face up? When you say face down, you mean face up. Back to where you were. That's not you have to be You start you the hay, right? Do that. No, we're all right. When you get to the back step, right? You face literally up and down the set, not at some funny angle, and you back up and down like that, right? When the tramping mower is done for Alex Franklin, you put this extra little twist into it you know, for the middle, so they actually face it up and down, and it is a nice sort of feature to have in the duck, so up and down. Um, can we do step back now? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that with the middle side. We can do the middle Because the musician couldn't play the right tunes for the dance or got um, the wrong titles on, that's all irrelevant. Right, Molly Oxford, step back. <coughs> it's characterised by having long figures. And the reason I started off with a short size step dance is that short figures have hot, you know, hot backs. Uh, long figures have a little bit of stepping and a galley tacked on the end. Right. Um, for those dancers that didn't include the side step, uh, there was a bit of data about whether, like in foot up, whether foot ups for dancers actually had uh, back steps or galleys in them. As Franklin said to Sharp, an annoyance at one stage apparently, you know, it's so long ago that I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't at all short. So there's some dancers, uh, foot ups with and without galleys have been collected at different times. Um, I say the rational way is to do what we do now, and that's put in a galley, except for the old case you know, where the rest of it doesn't make Right, all right. Um, so you back step, face, step, and galley. Now, um, there are some rules about this, and they're not terribly logical. Uh, in the foot up, we start on the inside foot, right? Let's just practice that. <laughs> da 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 Right, come on. Just for that.
Step back, so he's in three and a jump. It's the normal thing. Roy, as a champion this year, you're not doing it in the centre and stepping into the forest, right? Roy, Roy, inside foot lead on the first part of the ring. Roy, 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 it's not I, I, I just start on foot. Yeah. Further out, not inside the red. Not inside the
Toe, heel, toe. 
of us can't do it, right? Can I just use the odd double set as well? The odd single set and the odd double set. I thought these were playing on the same beat with the set. Right. Let's try the figures. Right? He's actually got a move doing that. Okay. Let's put up. It's a funny length tune, you have four bars to heel and toe and hop back. And feet can go to jump, right? Let's just try it. Punch to yourself. And the first hand is put up. And feet can go to jump.
Yes, all our old fashioned. Try and spot the top of your
still do the same tap capers, right? In the middle. The third time we do the chorus, we do the upright capers. The fourth time, we do the upright capers. But rather than everybody getting, trying to get all six to do the upright capers on simultaneously, we do it as a collective, two at a time. It's not just a long version, this is the unbelievably extreme version. <laughs> <laughs> so, his lunch will be in 13 minutes, for the If you're very it's the explanation, right? Face up! We have no time to waste! <laughs>
time. He's supposed to turn on that time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
this up a little bit, but you're getting this spring in, into the, you know, step forward into it. Now what's interesting is in the sharp papers, he uses between the step and the, the twitch, the symbol for a leap, you know, a caper. In other words, he expects you, having done that, to, you know, to get off the grain and not just to uh, slide rain on the ball of your feet as if it was easy, right? The next thing which is important, which has come to us, the final verse I come to, it isn't in the manuscript, it is the way Sharp taught it and the way the, the sort of surviving dancer had it, is that on the jumps the hands do not go above the shoulders. That's up here. Not up here, up here. And that's a characteristic of the tradition. Right? Now, when we do foot up, when we do foot up, we pause at the end, at the end of the galley facing out. Again, the only tradition. Remember this morning, Phil Tain faces in halfway, Sherborne faces out. So let's try halfway, as it were, face out with our arms out in front of us. Right. <laughs> Two short sticks. <laughs> like that, you know, that's sort of about right. The other one, much more imaginative way, is if in fact you've said, Well done, lad, you know, you've gone away, it's just like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? 
Well, it's not a wave that's pulling the forelock. Right? Now, this is not a rude gesture here, right? although it ought to be. Well, people that, did it too often, people that did it too often used to be given a, a cloth cap with a brass front piece, you know, so they wouldn't wear their hat out too much. Uh, but basically, you bring your hand up and then nod your head onto it. No, no, you, you nod on her, right? Showing true humility in front of the squire, vicar, and anybody else who owes you money. Right? So, right, you don't actually put anything. Yeah. <laughs> you, got you would take your hat off, you've got a hat, I suppose. But you wouldn't normally dance on the hat. Let's, and then for crossing over, two bars are stepping and galley out, whichever is appropriate to where you are. And when I say galley out, you know what out means in that sense. If you're at this corner, you go that way, that corner, you go that way, to this corner, you go that way, and that way, and the middles follow their tops, wherever their tops have got to. Right? So let's just try that first bit. Yeah. Foot up and first course. Start with a foot up. What's just up?
papers. One, two, three. Right? Cross, cross together. Yeah, that's part of Sunday. Four. Right, thanks to yourself.
that looks quite good. Now I want to do the third one before we finish, which is Lance of Buncham, so called, which is the Sherborne Dearest Dicky tune. Right? from the second two in the way they're done. The first two are pretty well the same as uh, the first one with orange and blue, right? Side step, side step, da, da, and then cross over with two furries. One, two, three, one, two, three. So a little bit more energy it, into a game. Down two, three, so yeah. good. Let's just try that chorus with your partner, please. Practice. See what I mean, do a sticky Just one place here, sticky Yeah, I'm like this Started. 
Not that it makes the slightest difference, I know. Everybody face up, hold. You have to do this in under five minutes, though.
to Roy for doing all the teaching this weekend.